Hey, good morning, Elmwood Church. This is uh, Dave Peel coming to you live. Uh, well, kind of live. We are recorded. Um, but uh, coming to you today from the Elmwood United Methodist Church, or I'm out here somewhere. Uh, maybe you know where I'm at. Maybe you don't. You'll hear more about that here in a moment. Welcome you. I'm the pastor here at the Elmwood United Methodist Church, and I greet you in the name of Christ. So glad you you stopped by today. I hope you're making this your regular Sunday morning opportunity to uh, be inspired by God's Word and to be encouraged this day. And we hope uh, these messages and uh, videos we are sharing with you is bringing hope to your life in the midst of uh, fear and panic. Uh, in the midst of this uh, pandemic in which we are a part of. But uh, so glad you stopped by and hope you're uh, getting inspired today and, and from this. want to give a great big shout out again to our graduates. Uh, congratulations to all of our graduates. Their names will be here on the uh, uh, video at the end. And I encourage you to drop them a note or uh, uh, let them know, a uh, shout out on Facebook or something. Let them know that uh, we care for them and uh, we're so proud of them. It's been a challenging year for all of our students, no matter where they are, but especially for our graduates in 2020. We, uh, our hearts and prayers go out to them and to all of them, uh, their families as well. Uh, also want to remind you, don't forget to uh, uh, like our page on Facebook. You can also find us on YouTube, where uh, if you're not on Facebook, you can find us here on YouTube, and uh, that's another place and opportunity. Don't forget to comment if you can. Uh, let us know uh, that you're here. Be sure to check in or like our, like our page, and uh, be sure to hit that bell icon uh, so you can be notified. Subscribe uh, to us and hit the bell icon on uh, YouTube so you can be notified every time we upload a video. On Facebook, uh, be sure to uh, be notified, get notified that when we upload a video as well, uh, we you'll be notified of that. I also want to encourage you to continue to support the church financially. We are eternally grateful for all of the faithful uh, folks out there that have been giving, uh, finding ways to uh, continue to support the church uh, through your financial gifts. Uh, we are uh, indebted to you and so grateful for what you're doing, but we continue to need your help. The food pantry uh, is available. If you know somebody that's in need of food, don't forget to let them know about our food pantry at the United Methodist Church of Elmwood. Uh, we would be glad to, to help them and reach out to those folks as well. So as we uh, prepare to worship, and prepare to go before the, the throne of grace. Let us lift our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you for your presence with us today, wherever we find ourselves. We know we are always with you, and you, you, Lord God, you are always with us. We pray for those families that are uh, going through struggles right now, those that are out of work, and those that are trying to make ends meet. We pray for them that your supernatural provision would reach out to them, that you would use us to reach to them through us as well. Father, we pray for those that are uh, preparing for surgery. We know a number of folks that will be going through surgery here this week, and we pray for your peace to be with them and their family. We pray for your hands to be over those doctors and nurses and anesthesiologists and all of those folks involved in that surgery. We give you praise for what you're going to do and how you're going to bring healing. We pray for a quick recovery as well. We pray for those families that are mourning and grieving over a loss of a loved one. We ask that you comfort them and surround them with your peace. We pray for those families uh, that are uh, trying to make plans what to do uh, this summer. Maybe they're planning on going on a short vacation. We pray that you would help them and guide them. We thank you for all of the uh, blessings of this school year. And now that uh, school is out for many locations, we pray that you would continue to bless those students, allow them to grow and understand uh, in their learning and education. We look to you for your blessings this day, and we praise you and thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, as we pray in the manner in which Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Well, I'm uh, looking around here where I'm at. Uh, some of you might be familiar where I'm at. Um, I'm right off a road. You, I'm sure you just heard the car go by. Um, but uh, what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to kind of start something new. Uh, where's PD? Uh, not where's Waldo? And I'm not going to wear the red and white shirt and, and uh, cap. But uh, where's PD? And so today I want to encourage you to um, think about where I might be. You may have a really good guess. And so what you can do, leave a comment down below, uh, either on YouTube or on Facebook. Uh, leave a comment where you think I am. And whoever is the first one to guess correctly will get a $10 Toots Treats gift certificate from me. So you got to be the first one to do that if you guess correctly. So we hope to see you uh, soon. And... Uh, so we get ready for today's message uh, about not giving up and about trusting the Lord. So let us, uh, let us listen to God's word today and let us be encouraged. And I want to encourage you one last time. Uh, Jesus says that we have the light of Christ within us. And so I want to encourage you today, someone out there needs to see that light. The light shines in the darkness, it says in, in John, and uh, the, the darkness cannot overcome it. There's so many walking in darkness right now, but you can be that light for them to see Jesus. I want to encourage you to, to do that today, even if that light has to just shine on you for a few minutes. Uh, remember that you have the light of Christ to help someone and to bless someone today. So let us do that and let us praise God. We'll see you uh, again. Thanks for being here. seen that commercial. It's pretty popular at one time. A little boy who was kind of fidgety and not wanting to be in this location, his mother had brought him to this uh, grand auditorium to hear the performance by a fav famous pianist uh, as he was going to be per performing that night. Little, the mom's hope and idea was that he would be so inspired and encouraged by this music and by the performance that he would not quit on his uh, piano lessons and he would put a little more effort into it. As the mother and the uh, father were visiting with some other folks, the little boy wandered off without their notice as the, uh, the lights began to uh, dim in the theater on uh, uh, the announcement that this was to about the performance was about to begin. The curtain opened as the little boy that belonged to the mom and dad was sitting behind the piano beginning to play chopsticks. Not very successfully, but playing them. And to the shock of people seated around them and some very verbal uh, outspoken comments, get him away from that piano. And who is he? And what is this, a joke? The parents realized that it was their child playing. And the mother, you know, you know how moms are. Dad, you go get him. <laughs> I know how that is. Uh, they, they were in shock. The performer, the famous pianist, heard the sound out, out on the stage and walked out behind the boy without his notice. And without skipping a beat, 
the pianist reached around both sides of the boy and began to improvise with his own melody. As he did so, he told the young man repeatedly, as he whispered in his ear, don't quit, don't give up, whatever you do, don't stop, keep going, keep going. As they played that beautiful symphony together in which it became, the audience began to cheer as they ended it with a uh, grandiose uh, crescendo and <laughs> finished. And uh, both the, the, the pianist, the artist, and the young boy stood and took a bow to the audience. You probably have seen that commercial on television, but I'm wondering if you knew this or not. That is a true story that actually happened. When that pianist shared that story with others, said, what were you saying to him? And he simply said, I was telling the boy, don't quit, don't give up, don't stop. Now, in the commercial, he plays Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. I imagine there's copyright issues there. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. The boy was playing something, and the master came and helped him with that me melody in the midst of that struggle. While others were frowning and disapproving on what the boy was trying to do, the master saw it and was able to turn that into something beautiful and bring encouragement. And that's exactly the words I think right now we need to hear. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't stop. Keep going. Maybe right now those are words that you need to hear. Maybe you need to hear that those words for your marriage, for a relationship you're in. Maybe you need to hear that for your job, going to school or seeking that, that advancement. Maybe right now you're just struggling because you want to quit. We all want to quit this pandemic thing. I think we all want to quit this, this idea that we are sheltered in place. And I'm, I'm not here to debate that or argue that, but this is getting old. We want to quit that. We want to get back to what we, we call normal. We want to get back to what is familiar. Maybe today you need to hear those words. Don't quit. Don't stop. Now listen to these words from 1 Peter. He said, Beloved friends, if life gets extremely difficult with many tests, don't be be bewildered as though something strange were overwhelming you. Instead, continue to rejoice for you in a measure have shared in the sufferings of the anointed one so that you can share in the revelation of his glory and celebrate with even greater gladness. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are greatly blessed because the spirit of glory and power who is the spirit of God rests upon you. If you bow low in God's awesome presence, he will eventually exalt you as you have as you leave the timing in his hands. Pour out all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there, for he is always tenderly cares for you. Be well balanced and always alert, because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly like a roaring lion looking for its prey to devour. Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. For you know that your believing brothers and sisters around the world are experiencing the same kinds of troubles you endure. And then, after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace, who has called you to share in his eternal glory in Christ, will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes, he will set you firmly in, in place and build you up. And he has all the power needed to do this forever. Amen. I can't begin to tell you how many times I have wanted to walk away from ministry. I can't begin to tell you. Many times I have failed, 
many times that I have attempted to do something and it was only met with negative results. The times it was completely my fault. I made a mistake. I forgot something or I didn't do something or I missed something. I wanted to quit. And I will confess there are many parishioners over the years that would have been glad if I had quit or if they had saw me humiliated and let go. But that didn't just apply to my ministry. There's been times in my own personal life I have wanted to walk away from something, to uh, give up and quit something. Maybe you have done that in your own life. Maybe you have felt that way in your own life. Maybe you have experienced that in your own, uh, your own life, uh, how you have been afraid or alone. The problem is hanging in there. It's kind of hard to hang in there. Your hands are tired or you're tired of trying. I don't know if any of you remember. I imagine my older folks do. Well, I remember it. How many remember that old poster with the kitten hanging from a tree and the tagline, hang in there, baby? That was a motivational poster, very popular at one time. There's many different variations of that famous poster, but the sentiment was the same and the message was the same, to hang in there. The challenge that we need to face and the challenge we need to understand is challenges can turn our victories, or can turn into victories when we trust the master to turn it into a symphony. Our challenge is, is that we can experience victories in our life when the master reaches in and turns it into a symphony. We all have that challenge. We've encountered many problems over the years. I have encountered many problems over the years and, and I have wanted to walk away just like you have maybe in some situation maybe you're going through right now. But the point that Peter was making to the church and that he was reaching out to them is says, don't quit, don't give up, hang in there. This is bad, yes, but there's something better on the way. There's something wonderful on the way. And it simply says, Peter is simply saying, trust God through this. Over many years, I've encountered one famous question time after time from people and that is if God is so loving why are bad things happening to us why did this happen to me why did this happen to my family why does this happen to them why did this situation come up and and quite honestly I don't always have the answer many theologians over the years have struggled to try to find the proper answer to this question and we struggle with that but I want to give us a possibility three possibilities of what that answer means and what that man answer can be some say that an all-loving God would never allow suffering Therefore, either God is not really all-loving or God is not really all-powerful and cannot stop suffering from occurring. The second one is others say that God is like a great watchmaker. He created the world, set it in motion, and kind of left it up on a shelf and walked away from it. And still others have said that pain and suffering result from our sinfulness, and if we were better people, we wouldn't suffer. This is all our fault. Now, each of these theories and all of the others that have been put forward, there's a lot more, has its strengths and its problems in the midst of all of that. First of all, the decision of God's power and living, loving nature is not mutually exclusive. You know, it, that there is more possibilities either than God doesn't love us or God isn't powerful. I think there's more possibilities than that. There are literally a, a plethora of other possibilities. So that argument simply gets us nowhere that God isn't loving or God isn't powerful. That doesn't really produce a, a really good answer. The watchmaker scenario is also problematic because why would God, who just set the world in motion and walk away from it, and as it's falling apart, send his own son to die painfully? for that which is falling apart because of its own divisiveness and rescue us from sin. Why would God do that? 
And then the idea that pain and suffering are the response to our sinfulness doesn't work either. Uh, it doesn't work for me anyway, because I'm, I'm stumped at trying to figure out what horrible sin 200,000 people would have committed that it would cause them to die a few years ago in a tsunami. None of these explanation is sufficient for me to explain the idea of pain and the idea of a loving and blessed creator. It doesn't have to be something as huge as and mysterious as a tsunami or a tornado or a pandemic or a hurricane or any of that to cause us deeply to question. It can be something very simple. Why did I lose my job? Why did, why did my girlfriend leave me or boyfriend leave me? Why did, why did my parent die? Why did my pet die? It can be something simple as, why didn't I get to walk across the stage for graduation? Those are questions that we, could, we can raise when we, when we lose our job or when we go through situations like that and we ask God, why me? Why would you do this to me? Why would you cause this God in my life? What have I done to you? So today we, we pause once again to ask ourselves the question, what do we do? Where are we? I cannot fit this all together by saying God did it, but neither can I say there was nothing God could do about it. Do you see the problem? I cannot fix it together at all. I can only, like Job, the bi biblical character in the Old Testament who suffered so much, I can only endure as he endured. I do not know why God did not prevent these problems. I do not know why God allowed COVID-19 to come into our world and into our, our nation. And, and I do not know why the suffering that it has produced from its deaths and pain and job losses and business losses and all of the other things that, that, that we had, all of the things that we experienced. To live without the answer is kind of precarious, I believe. It's hard to keep one's footing, to have no explanation. It puts us on unstable ground because we don't know where to trust. We don't know how to step. We don't know how to move forward. I can do nothing else than endure in the face of this deepest and most painful of mysteries that we all face. But I believe God the Father, the maker of heaven and earth, and the resurrector of Jesus Christ, I also believe in, as I believe in him, I also believe that there are some people's lives and jobs and careers and situations were cut off in their prime in the midst of this pandemic or even without this pandemic. I cannot fit these pieces together. I am lost. And maybe you are too. Maybe you are too today. The most agonizing question I have ever asked is, I do not know the answer. I don't always know. And I have attempted over the years to try to answer this for people, and in embarrassment gave them a superficial answer. And so, even though I cannot always guess why, I can trust that the challenge of our situation can bring victory when the master steps in to make it a symphony. The Apostle Peter gives us three possible ideas from our scripture today, and I want to look at those uh, to our possi the possible answer from, from Peter to our human suffering. First, the suffering we experience in life may be indeed provide the test by which our faith is strengthened. Think about these questions. Maybe right now your faith has been shaken by this. Has it? By all that's happening right now? Maybe it's been strengthened by all of this. 
quite possibly God is trying to show you how strong your faith really is. Not for God's benefit, but for yours. Secondly, suffering provides us a way to become more deeply connected to Jesus' suffering thereby deepening our connection to him as our Savior. How has your prayer life been since all of this began? Are you praying or are you complaining? How has your devotion life been since you have been placed on quarantine? Are you spending more time in God's word? Are you spending more time with the Lord? How has your conversations with others through social media or safe distancing, social distancing, when you're able to connect, have those conversations turned to faith, turned to hope? Thirdly, suffering in accordance with God's will, not suffering because God demanded it, but Rather, suffering as a loving child of God provides us the opportunity to truly live our faith, to provide, provide what we believe we're made of, to prove that. It gives us an opportunity to prove, I can do all things. Okay, show me you can do all things. Maybe it's, I can do some things. Well, that's true. I can do most things or some things with my own strength. But the scripture says this, that I can do all things through, that's the key word we often miss, through Christ who gives me strength, who is my strength, who provides my strength. Maybe right now it feels like we're just hitting the keys and playing a simple, simple notes of chopsticks. Maybe it feels like nobody cares and it doesn't matter what we're doing or nothing exciting was going to come for this. Nothing exciting, but quietly the master comes up from behind and, and reaches around and begins to press those keys with us and whispers in, in our ear, don't quit, don't stop, don't give up. I'm with you. There's hope. There is hope for you, and I will help you through this time. I will give you encouragement. I will give you strength. I will give you what you need. Don't give up. Don't quit. Our playing chopsticks may not be the most exciting thing that we do, but right now, maybe that's what God wants us to play because it challenges us to victory as the master helps us to create a symphony. As the master helps us to get through this time and through this challenge. And wherever we're going, like all the cars traveling up and down this road as they, as they cross over, as they pass, as they go, where is God taking you? Do you hear the master's voice reaching, saying, don't quit, don't give up, I'm with you. Keep going, don't stop. About the time we're ready to give up, we hear the master saying those words. And so maybe today you are hearing those. If you're listening carefully, because friends, there is hope, there is light, there is life, there is, there is encouragement, there is the power of Christ to help you in the midst of all of this. There is the hope that we have that we will not be left alone, that we will be encouraged this day, and that we will find the opportunity to keep going. We're almost there. There's businesses beginning to open back up. Restaurants are beginning to open back up. Our churches, well, they'll be opening soon. It'll be different. It'll be scaled down, and you'll hear more about that later. But I want to encourage you to today that don't give up. Don't give up giving to your congregation. Don't give up supporting and praying for your congregation. Don't give up because you think nobody cares, we do. We do. But more importantly, God cares. God cares for us. So I encourage us today, don't give up. Amen?
and amen. Have a blessed week. Lord bless you and keep you and make a shave. Face, face <laughs> needs a shave. Yeah. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you, to give you comfort, to give you courage, to give you hope and give you peace and to give you the encouragement this day and this hour. Don't give up. Don't stop. Keep going. Stick to it. And he loves you greatly. We love you too. So let's, let's keep going. Amen and amen.